Good morning! Halika, magkapi tayo! Welcome to the morning coffee with Father Jerry. Our text for today is from the Gospel of John, chapter 15, verses 1 to 8. It says, I am the true vine, and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit he prunes, so that it will be even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If you do not remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you remain in me, and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. This is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit showing yourselves to be my disciples. Thus far is the reading for today's Gospel Reflection. What is it for us? What is God's message for us through this text just read for today? We only become fruitful and productive if we remain attached to the vine. For we do not have roots of our own, underline it, roots of our own. It is the vine, our Lord Jesus Christ, that provides us with the things we need to bear much fruits in our personal and in our social life. In the level of the personal, it is the transformation of the self for a better person. In the social level, it is in the growth of the love of God and our fellow men. It cut, if cut abruptly from the vine, we become useless. Or actually, we come, we, we are useless when cut off from the vine. If we venture our own, we need a process of crafting or cutting off. Crafting or cutting off is part of the process of taking care of the vine in order for it to grow, to grow and bear fruit. When it is now fruit bearing, it becomes more productive and more fruits are being produced. That's very important in the process or in this particular parable of the vine and the branches. Pruning. One has to go through a process. We may call it as test and trial, but what's 
the most important reminder in the gospel today is that we remain in connected in the vine. That means Christ should be the center, the main vine, the center of our lives. And part of growing up is the pruning. In order for us to go through life, we need some kind of trial and test in order for us to be more confident within ourselves, in order for us to measure how, our, our, how strong is our belief and trust and faith in God. We need some kind of pruning, pruning, cutting off some stem in the vine in order for our life to grow more and produce much mature product. Pruning is, it might be, it might come to us as pain, it might come to us as sacrifice, it might come to us in different forms actually. But as Jesus assured us through the gospel, that pruning is part and parcel of our growth process. The most important thing is when crisis comes to us, when trials come to us, when we are tests and tested in our personal life, the most important reminder is stay centered. Christ should be the center of our lives. That's the meaning of being connected to the vine. Anything may happen, but the most important thing is we are connected with God Himself. Anytime, any moment of our lives. We continue. Why does Jesus speak of Himself as the true vine. The image of the vine was rich for the Jews since the land of Israel was covered with numerous, numerous vineyards. Actually, ito yung pinaka main, pinaka main, pinaka essence ng kanilang uh, dito, work, yung productivity nila nakadepende sa kanilang uh, farm at uh, mostly ang farm is composed of this vineyard. It had a religious connotation to it as well. In the book of Isaiah chapter 5 verse 7, Isaiah spoke of the house of Israel as the vineyard of the Lord. And Jeremiah said that God had planted Israel as his choice vine. That's from Jeremiah chapter 2 verse 21. While the vine became a symbol of Israel as a nation, it also was used in the scriptures as a sign of degeneration, a deformed state of spiritual growth, a moral decline. Isaiah's prophecy spoke of Israel as the vineyard which yielded wild grapes. That's in Isaiah chapter 5, verse 1 to 7. Jeremiah said that Israel had become a degenerate and wild vine. So when Jesus calls himself as the true vine, he makes clear that no one can grow in spiritual fruitfulness and moral goodness unless they are rooted in God and in His life-giving Word. Whoa, that's powerful word. Okay? So, very powerful to all of us that no one can grow spiritually fruitful and morally good when they are not not rooted in God as the vine and his life-giving word. Underline it. 
religious affiliations or association with spiritually minded people is not sufficient by itself. One must be firmly rooted in the true in the tree of life. That's in Revelation chapter 22, 1 to 2. In other words, we cannot just claim on our own power. We cannot just claim that I have the power. I, I, I can empower other people because I have the power in me. You cannot even claim that you have that gift in order to motivate people. You cannot even claim that I have the moral principles in my life because I do believe in it. No. Basic requirement is one should be rooted firmly, firmly into the main vine and that is God, Jesus. Okay? So we continue. Jesus makes a claim which only God can make. He is the true source of life that sustains us and makes us fruitful in living the abundant life which God has for us. It is only through Jesus that one can be fully grafted into the true vine, the vineyard of the Lord. Challenge. There is a simple truth here. We are either fruit-bearing or non-fruit bearing. There is no in-between, but the bearing of healthy fruit requires drastic pruning. The Lord promises that we will bear much fruit if we abide in Him and allow Him to purify us. Do you trust in the Lord's healing and transforming power to give you that abundant life and fruit of his heavenly kingdom, Jesus offers us true life, the abundant life which comes from God and which results in great productivity or great fruits or fruitfulness. How does the vine become fruitful? The vine dresser must carefully prune the vine before it can bear good fruit. Vines characteristically have two kinds of branches, those which bear fruit and those which don't. The non-bearing branches must be carefully pruned but in order for the vine to conserve its strength for bearing good fruit. Jesus Use this image to describe the kind of life he produces in those who are united with him. The fruit of righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. That's in the book of Paul to the Romans, chapter 14, verse 17. Jesus says there can be no fruit in our lives apart from from him. The fruit he speaks of here is the fruit of the Holy Spirit written in Galatians chapter 5 verse 22 to 23. Okay? So the whole gospel reminds us to be always connected to the vine in order for us to grow and bear much fruit. Amen? Let us pray. Lord Jesus, may I be one with you in all that I say and in all that I do. Draw me close that I may glorify you and bear fruit for your kingdom. Inflame my heart with your love and remove from it anything that would make me ineffective or unfruitful in loving and serving you as my all. We ask this in the name of Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Okay, mga kapatid, don't forget again to finish your coffee. Magandang buhay. See you tomorrow.